Hi, and welcome to this episode of the AI Show. My name is Micheline Harris, and I'm a software engineer in commercial software engineering at Microsoft. And today I'm going to talk about when and when not to use deep learning. So it's a question that's asked time and time again of me, like, when do I use deep learning, right? Um, and basically, I took a moment, I made a list of when I've used classical machine learning and when I've not. Um, so, you know, to be honest, I fear that deep learning is a little bit overused. I think a lot of solutions can come from classical machine learning. So I'm just going to talk about that, kind of introduce the space, and give you guys some guidance. All right, so AI. AI is the big space. So that's, that's really like our umbrella field. Um, what computers are capable of in the field of artificial intelligence? Um, machine learning falls under this. And machine learning can encompass this thing, what we call neural networks. And neural networks are the architecture. Deep learning is the algorithm that implements neural networks. Um, and basically, machine learning at a really high level just maps input to output with something we call a model or a machine learning model. Um, and, and the uh, deep learning um, is a form of this. Um, basically, we're getting away, uh, as software developers, from a rule-based system. OK, so what's the big deal about neural networks? So basically, it's data. So we have more data, more and more and more. It gets super powerful when we start using neural network architectures and deep learning algorithms to solve big data problems and machine learning tasks. That being said, if you've got like small data sets, sometimes classical machine learning is A-OK -okay to use. Also, I just want to say that, um, you know, I say big data sets. I'm talking about using a training data set. So there's a difference between training data sets and test data sets. So all these algorithms are, are being trained with what we call the training data sets. So I just want to make that super clear. It's a pretty basic um, concept, but you know, it's, it's something for us to think about. Um, as we, as we move forward um, in this presentation. So, all right, so now let's dive into when to use classical machine learning or deep learning. So this is my list I made. Um, it's not an exhaustive list. It's just rules I've been using lately to know when to use one or the other. Um, so let's begin classical machine learning. So I use classical machine learning when I have very straightforward feature engineering. Um, so this could be, when I have um, basically a very simple data set, for instance, black and white images of digits, um, or maybe a really small corpus of text data. Um, and, and also, um, another reason to use classical machine learning over deep learning is when we need varied algorithm choices. So there are a lot of different algorithms in the classical machine learning space. They're actually very, very different from each other in some cases. And oftentimes, we want to um, have a lot of choices in the algorithms we use. So like I mentioned, you know, with the feature engineering, we have um, a small amount of simple data. Uh, it's, it, we might go and use some classical machine learning, some things like um, random forests, decision trees, support vector machines. Those are pretty simple, you know, guys to use. And, um, and it's, it's actually good if you have a small amount of simple data as well. So if we have, this is a big one, a very limited compute. Um, so sometimes, you know, we are working with uh, just a single machine or a single VM. Um, maybe we, you know, are limited by other, other resource constrictions. So having um, that limitation, oftentimes people will turn to, to starting, at least starting in classical machine learning. Um, and also, what, one thing I really love about classical machine learning is that, um, and if you can't tell, I apparently really, really love classical machine learning because I keep talking about it. I will talk about deep learning shortly. Um, but it's simple and explainable. So when you are you know, at a meeting or trying to explain it to a non-expert, it's a lot easier to, to explain classical machine learning algorithms um, and approaches. And then a fast prototyping is, is an aspect of classical machine learning I like. Um, a lot of the packages that are used for this type of machine learning 
are pretty darn simple to use. They're easy to set up, install. Um, they're easy to understand. They're usually high-level APIs. Um, so that's, that's pretty awesome. And finally, when the accuracy of your test on your test data set right, is acceptable, then we are good to go. Um, a lot of companies go with classical machine learning um, over deep learning when their accuracy is acceptable. And they don't need to go to that like, bigger, more complicated solution. OK, so that all being said, what about this deep learning stuff? Um, so I'd say when feature engineering gets complex, so that's like our color images, they're like RGB, they're which is like three channel. Um, maybe they have tons of different objects in them and we're trying to do object detection. Um, or maybe we're classifying like symphony music. Um, we want something a, a bit more uh, capable of dealing with complex features. Um, and I didn't really define it, but a feature is, a feature is just simply um, a variable, an input variable. Um, so in an image, like each pixel location could be a feature. So um, it gets very complex when you have super large images and they're, they're complex images. Um, all right. So when we've got the compute resources, that's another um, you know, approach or resource we have for deep learning. Um, it's kind of a checkbox, right? Like we've got the compute resource, we've got GPU acceleration maybe um, on some of our VMs, uh, we are good to go. So say we have also just a ton of data. You remember that diagram I just showed, the accuracy of neural networks um, is a lot greater when we have that large data set compared to other machine learning approaches. And perhaps we need better accuracy. Our company that we work with, um, you know, or our partners come back to us and say, hey, like the accuracy for that classical machine learning model is just not good enough for us. We want it to be you know, uh, up at 0.99 rather than 0.95 or something like that. Um, so this is a bit more uh, technical, but augmentation, which is when you increase the data size by basically uh, transforming your current data into different confirmations and, and, and forms, um, basically making like an artificial data set from your current data set. A lot of these frameworks, deep learning frameworks, um, will do augmentation and other transformations as they read the data in. Um, so I found that to be actually a really powerful and quite nice thing. Like it's a step I don't have to do basically when I do deep learning. Um, Okay, so you know, here's the, the, the kind of the, some of the arguments for one or the other. Um, what if we do go with deep learning? Like, what do we do? Um, so there's a lot of Python packages out there. It can get really overwhelming. Um, so I just want to kind of like give you a glimpse of, of some of the ones I've seen and used um, that I've found useful and kind of their, their level of entry. Um, as you start learning and, and, and learning in this space. Um, so in this, it's a spectrum basically that I'm gonna talk about. All the way from like basic, low level, very mathy, um, all the way up to maybe like even like a, a GUI, um, a drag and drop interface. So let's start with the, the super mathematical low level guys. So you've all heard about TensorFlow, maybe you've heard about CNTK, maybe MXNet. They all have very low level interfaces. Um, and APIs. So if you really love that stuff, you love the nitty gritty, you love like getting down into the, to the deep dives of these, these sort of frameworks, like you can definitely go there and do a lot of customize, customizable things. Um, that being said, there's layers um, and APIs that sit on top of these frameworks. For instance, Keras, you might have heard of that. You can actually use TensorFlow low level and CNTK low level like as kind of a backend to Keras, which is pretty cool. Um, Keras is a uh, higher level. So it's easier to use and easier to program in. It's a, it's a nice little layer on top of things. TensorFlow also has something called layers. Um, it's a TensorFlow API that they you know, created for uh, just easier development. Um, 
We've got other ones. PyTorch is a new kid to the block that's just taking off, and that's got a, kind of the same level as Keras. It's pretty easy to use. Um, definitely easier than the low-level guys, um, CNTK and, and TensorFlow. Um, that being said, CNTK has one too, so you know they're all moving in this direction. Um, these these companies and these frameworks. Um, so you're not just stuck with TensorFlow Basic, is what I'm saying, or CNTK Basic. Um, and moving up the line, um, TensorFlow is nice. They actually came out with this thing called Estimators, um, and I'm not going to go too much into detail, but Estimators is kind of a nice, like, um, easy API that sits on top of the other ones. Um, it's kind of limited right now. It doesn't have convolutional neural networks. Um, but I found it like super easy to program. It does a lot of abstraction. Um, Scikit-learn, I think I mentioned that. Maybe not. But it has mostly classical machine learning. But it does have restricted Boltzmann machines and multilayer per perceptrons, so some neural network stuff. Um, and then finally, we've got even like drag and drop interfaces, which are super cool um, and super nice. Azure Machine Learning Studio actually has some neural nets um, and, and other ones like that. So, all right, just to wrap up, um, artificial intelligence, we, we kind of set the landscape. Um, machine learning fits under that, and then we've got neural network architectures um, and deep learning algorithms that implement those, those architectures. We've seen that we get a lot better accuracy when we're like talking about big data using neural networks. Um, and then, you know, I, I showed you uh, my lists of when I use classical machine learning, when I use deep learning, and I set the landscape for kind of the the how you would enter into the Python packages for deep learning space. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Um, and thank you so much. You can find me on Twitter at rheartpython and. Thanks for listening to this episode of the AI Show.